it's a great time of the year, fantastic time of the year to be involved in footy and preliminary final weekend beckons and who knows, it could be for the last time as a senior coach for Mick Malthouse, certainly for the Pies, he's been with us as a regular right through the year and he joins us just getting there early at the MCG, Mick, welcome. Yeah, it's um, just organised my day, just uh, making sure I'm here early enough to, to get in the gate and as you can see just testing the wind as it turns out it's uh, hurricane force. <laughs> So um, we're, we're, we're lucky to hold these lights up at the moment. In fact, we need Camo here to hold this statue out the back. <laughs> <laughs> how, are the, how are the emotions at this stage? Uh, and, and are they any different to normal at this time of the year? Well, I, I thought I was. I, I haven't been that well in the stomach. It's, and I know it's all nerves. And, uh, but I, I cast my mind back to last year and I was, I, was a, I was a mess last year as well. I tend to get like that. It's just, that's just the way it is. I think that no matter how long you've been in the game or how many finals you've been involved in, uh, you're right, at, you, you, you want to play finals football, you want to see your side play finals football and you know the repercussions, you, you finish on top of the ladder, you really only get one bonus to it and that's the first week of the finals because there on in it's a, it's a knockout, you don't get any uh, free hand, hand me uh, out cards to say well you can go again next week so uh, you're on tender hooks and, and I suppose with my situation next year it makes me even a little bit more nervous and uh, edgy and I, I just want I just want things to happen for our football club and our player group particularly the player group I think they've been so fantastic uh, uh, for the football club and also the supporters for so long and it'd be, it'd be great for those boys but then again you know there's an argument for Geelong West Coast and Hawthorne too. Mick can I ask you about two players that are integral to getting you through to the grand final that's Thomas and Reed, who you've bought into uh, the game this weekend and have you actually uh, given them some some form of match practice along with Heath Shaw and Maxwell uh, throughout the last you know 14 days to um, you know, get them through uh, this weekend's match oh well, well reed has been he's had a, a lot of weeks he's probably played 20 weeks of the 22 weeks perhaps of the year so I, I don't think uh, uh, Reedy really needs that uh, uh, it, as far as uh, Daisy goes, I, I, it's, he, he hasn't been out injured, so we've been able to keep the training up to him. We've, we've run a couple of Friday training sessions that have been pretty hostile, and uh, in fact, he said one of them was probably his hardest training he's done, so it's, it, it emulated a, a game of football without the, I suppose, the ball moving around so much. So, But these, these players have played a fair chunk of the season, so we don't have to worry about them. We've seen the way Heath Shaw rebounded so well after eight weeks, and he was on the training track every day. So uh, we haven't got a great deal of worries about them uh, being um, match-hardened. It's, it's their freshness that's going to be the bonus for us. Hey, Coach, I know you, you love every one of your players uh, to absolute bits, and Lordy just mentioned the guys that are coming into the side. Uh, what about the guys that you've got to leave out this time of year? Just uh, How do you approach that, and what sort of toll does that take on you? Well, that's part of the job. It's, it's 22 weeks, 22 players. Uh, situation changes, as I've said to Goldie last year. This time last year he missed out and he rebounded and got back into the grand final side. Um, th this is something that is, is not foreign to any coach. Uh, emotionally, yes, you, you hold it and you hide it. You can't afford to get too caught up in it. I, I really do feel for the two lads. Um, their goal beginning of the season was to play in finals or play games then play finals and, and play in a preliminary final which I think is uh, next to the grand final clearly it's it's uh, but certainly the preliminary finals are so different uh, you got the two teams that go head to head supporter wise in, in the grandstands and, and I think it's just a it's so special preliminary finals but we have to make those decisions they, uh, the boys understand they, they, they won't be accepting and I, and I hope they don't accept it. I hope they really fight back and if we're good enough to get to next week, I hope they're fighting for a position next week. And, and as I said to, to both lads, it's horses for courses and, and, we, and we could reorganise our side next week if we're fortunate enough to win and who knows which way it falls out. But I think it's, it's fair to say that the two lads coming in have earned their spot. They've, not only because they're all Australians, but they've been part of the side all year and they've been very, very important players to us all year. Mick, you lost your midfield coach last weekend. Has that unsettled things, or do the uh, midfield group just coach themselves down there? Oh, no, look, I, I know there's been, there's been a mixed reaction to that. I, I, I really don't understand how it could be mixed. I think it's very uh, right out there. It's clear cut. And any, uh, I've encouraged Mark. There's, there's no question. We, we, we get on absolutely beautifully. He's a, he's a wonderful young man, and, and I would call him a friend, and I hope he'd still call me a friend because uh, we've given each other opportunity. He's given me an opportunity to 
to uh, give him, delegate him the, the responsibility of the midfield and in turn I've been able to help him and he's promoted himself as far as uh, by, by his actions to, to be the, the Melbourne coach. But you can't have a Melbourne coach sitting on the bench and, and, and in fairness to him, he, ha he is now uh, working uh, many, many hours a day to get the Melbourne Football Club up and running. They'll, they'll start training soon, so we, we can't have any of that nonsense. And as far as the team goes, um, I, I've always believed in um, ownership, and I think that uh, when, when you give that ownership to, to uh, Darren Jolly, Luke Ball, Scott Penelbury, uh, Dane Swan, etc., you're not making too many mistakes because they're, they're all intelligent footballers. They understand the game. And on top of that, we've, we've brought in... Um, Craig McRae, he's a three-time Premiership player. He understands the midfield very, very well. He's been part of our midfield structure uh, going forward in the last uh, probably 10 to 12 weeks, sitting in the box with me. So he'll just slip into that role. We'll put someone else down on the bench in, in Anthony Rocker. Uh, the players respect him. He understands the game. And I don't think we'll miss a beat. It, it won't, that won't be the reason for us winning or losing. It'll be simply making sure that things run as smooth as they possibly can in, uh, in the heat of battle. And uh, uh, we don't go out in the field, the, the players do, and I'm sure they know their role. Let's have a look at the teams, as uh, the boys mentioned. Uh, did the two changes for the Pies, Reed and Thomas returning. Fasolo and Goldsack missing out. Mick explaining uh, how tough those decisions are. But uh, Goldsack's one versatile player. I'm sure he'd love to have him uh, have access to him during the game, Mick. But uh, we look at the, uh, the side and Reed slotting in there at uh, fullback. And uh, Thomas on the wing. The emergencies, Goldsack, Wood and Fasolo. And over at Hawthorne. There are uh, no change, so uh, that's no great surprise either after their win last week. The emergencies, Bruce, Savage and Lyle. Let's talk about uh, the Hawks a little bit, Mick. And, and obviously Buddy is always a huge focus. Um, how, do you, how do you plan for him? He only kicked one goal against you last time, but uh, he's obviously a huge factor, but just one of many uh, top players that they have. Oh, well, certainly, and, uh, and indeed one of, the, one of the great players of the competition. We understand that. Uh, we believe that uh, Chris Tarrant did a pretty good job on him last time. I think Ben Reid is also going to have a crack at him but from time to time. There's no question about that. And, and he did last time. We, uh, we, we understand, of course, that they are not a one-man band. They're a, they're a very, very talented group of players. They're, they're very well led. Um, I, I just think it's going to be one of those great games. I, I hope it is one of those great games because their forward line is potentially a 15 to 20 goal forward line. I don't think ours is far short of that. Our midfield will go around with theirs and they'll accumulate a lot of possessions. Our back half boys and their back half boys at, at last week, Hawthorne were outstanding and our boys, I thought, did a fantastic job against West Coast given the, that a lot of players were, uh, well, a couple of players were underdone and a couple carried injuries. A bit of a risk, but they're over that now. So when you, when you weigh that up, it really is going to get down to uh, maybe a little bit of luck, maybe, maybe game strategies. Uh, it, it might be just the, the roll of the dice, the, the rub of the green, the, whatever happens. So um, it's, it's pretty hard to split. But as, as a senior coach at Collingwood, I have the utmost faith in our boys. And I, when I look at Hawthorne, I can understand why Alistair would have the utmost faith in his side. Uh, they're a side that um, 18 games normally would have you on top of the ladder. So I guess that's, that, that shows you how close the sides are. Mick, and just on the selection, uh, a lot of people talk about the form of Didac and even side bottom of late. Uh, was there much debate at selection whether you did go with Fasolo and one of the other boys actually missed out this weekend? Oh, we, we, we've waited up uh, thoroughly. It's not as if it's, it was an easy decision. We had to go through the process. I, I think you've been pretty hard on uh, Steel Sidebottom. He's, um, in, in our case, uh, some of his one percenters have been through the roof. Um, I, I think that um, if you analyse, it's, it's a bit like Dale Thomas. So Dale Thomas, a couple of years ago, seemed to cap a, a couple of whack for not getting a lot of possessions, but he was played as a uh, d defensive forward and he, he, he completely destroyed or cut down players who were big uh, possession getters. Uh, uh, Steel Sidebottom has been very, very good for us in similar roles. He's, a, he's only a young, light lad, but he's, he's able to use the football. He runs all day. Uh, very creative, so I think we've been a bit stiff there. Alan Didak hasn't kicked a lot of goals of recent date, but his, his possession rate has lifted, his assists to goals has lifted, his intensity has lifted, and uh, I think Alan is, is ready for something pretty special. So we had to look at all those, all those com components. Um, we also looked at the experience factor, and I think that uh, you're going, again, going against a side like Hawthorne in a preliminary final. I think if it had been round 15 again, perhaps uh, there would have been a couple more changes. Who knows? But... But going into a preliminary final, there's no, there's no next day. You play to win. And I think that kids are good.
but uh, sometimes they can be found out in in, uh, in in the games like this. This this is the big stage. Mm. You, you, it's one game off the, the biggest, and there's no room for error. So we've elected to go with our experienced players, who we believe and have great faith in. Our coach, uh, I've got in my hands here a new magnificent publication uh, from yourself and David Butterfin, who's the well, I heard him the other. Heard someone describe him as the world's best leading sports scientist, David Butterfin, and yourself. Uh, the ox is slow, but the earth is patient. Great book, this Lordy. This could possibly knock yours right off the shelves, I reckon. And yeah. it's a lot cheaper than your book as well. Let me just tell you. Good read, Mick. Uh, what do we expect probably, out of that? Pr probably, got, pr probably got a bit more content than Lordy's. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're, we're actually, we're actually talking team. Um, <laughs> and uh, sorry, Lordy. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. But no, it's, a, it's, a, it is, it's a life book. For any gender, any age, uh, it's, it's, well, we believe it's a, a very good read. It's, it's football anecdotal. It's, it really is about uh, growing uh, as, as a person, uh, helping someone along the line, uh, helping teammates, okay. helping people out in ordinary, in, in, in everyday society. So uh, uh, you can get it from Dimmicks. You can get it from, <laughs> <laughs> you can get it from Mars, Kmart. You get it there. Scotty, I heard you get it on the plane. You can get it from the airport. And if you like, you can come to Collingwood and get it. So. Hey, hey, and Mick, yeah. Mick, it had to be a light read to factor in for the Collingwood supporters as well. Oh, so, so no, if you want something good. a bit more says, says an Essendon champion. Well, <laughs> Mick, goodness gracious me. How many pages do you talk about yourself? Uh, <laughs> that's a beautiful way to finish, Mick. We thank you very much for your time. Hopefully we'll be chatting to you this time next week. Thank you very much. Hope we're there next week. Mick Mouldhouse, the uh, coach of the Pies. <laughs>